People have asked Andre Ward over the last few days, would you fight Jake Paul? Would you be interested in coming out of retirement and going at this cat? What's your answer to something like that and why? Yeah, I'm open to a conversation about it. I, I'm not one of these cats. Like, I don't move out of anger. I don't move out of emotion. I don't do that in my life, and I didn't do that in the ring. I'm very calculated. I'm very thoughtful about every decision I make, uh, which is why a lot of people are like, why didn't you say his name and just call him out on the broadcast? Well, I know who I'm dealing with. This is a, one of the biggest influencers in the world. This is a YouTuber, and I just saw him do it today. Uh, Arthur Benavidez, who's a pound for pound, top five pound for pound fighter in the world, he directly yep. called out Jake Paul, and Jake Paul used it in his favor. He said, "I right, look at this. I got a pound for pound fighter calling me out. I run the game. I don't really move like that, but what I am doing is telling them I'm painting a picture like this. Brother, I'm 40 years old. In boxing terms, I'm an old man, now, right? I ain't touched a boxing ring in seven years. If you want to legitimize yourself, which is really whether you admit it or not, that's really what you have to. Come see somebody who can give you the credentials you need, whether you win or lose. You need that in, 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 in under your belt. You're going to legitimize yourself to this community. And you may say, I don't care. You may say, I'm not worried about that. But the truth is, you really are. You want to be embraced by individuals in this game to say, man, I respect Jake Paul. So if you want to do that, I'm open for a conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the jury, members of the Roll the Tape film crew, those were the words of Andre S.O.G. Ward himself. Um, I find it intriguing that Andre Ward's response would be what it was when Stephen A. Smith asked him a question about entertaining the opportunity to fight Jake Paul. And I'm 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 going I'm going I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you why. Andre Ward said a lot of things in his response. Okay? One of the things that he said is that he has not been actively fighting professionally In the last seven years. Now we know that we caught him sparring Terrence Crawford in the gym inside of a ring. But of course, we know sparring is not the same as professionally competing, especially at a high level inside of an actual competition. But where I'm getting at with this is. We haven't heard Andre Ward within seven years entertain the thought of fighting anyone else in or around his weight class. Let me give you an example. I haven't heard Andre Ward call out or not even call out because he said he wouldn't, he don't chase people. Not call out, but I didn't hear him. And if he did say it, somebody can educate me. And send, email me. Email me the clip. Or, e, or put it in the comment section. The link in the comment section below. And show me where Andre Ward said. Within the last seven years. That he'll fight Bivol. That he'll fight Canelo. That he'll fight Better Be. That he'll fight Benavidez. That he'll fight Caleb Plant. I'm just using just like these five names because these five names have notoriety. These five names have been competing at a high level in the last several years, not even seven, but several years and doing a tremendous job at it around the weight classes that Andre Ward competed in, 168 and 175 pounds. I haven't heard him call any of those guys out or even say publicly that he'll entertain the thought of fighting any of those guys within the last seven years that he's been retired. 
I have it. So what it sounds like to me, just on that front alone, I'm going to get on another point, but just on that front alone, what it sounds like to me is Andre Ward realizes that Jake Paul is a cherry pick to him because Jake Paul lacks a lot of experience compared to someone of the stature, caliber, and Hall of Fame accomplishment of Andre Ward. Andre Ward has, a, has an impeccable amateur pedigree, something that Jake Paul do not have. Andre Ward started in the sport of boxing as a kid, something that Jake Paul did not do. Andre Ward got in that ring and competed against some of the best professional boxers in or around his weight class when he was competing at the highest level, something else that Jake Paul did not do. And so we all understand that Andre Ward getting in a ring professionally to compete against Jake Paul obviously will still have some disadvantages for Jake Paul. Some advantages for Jake Paul now as well, based on the inactivity award in his age and, and his injury that he suffered that caused him to contemplate retirement and then actually going through with that process. So that's what I see. And that's what I hear based on the response I got from Andre Ward. He knows that Jake Paul is a quick lick. Fighting Jake Paul will be like a smash and grab in the jewelry store. So he understands that. Here's the thing that I'm conflicted with based on what Andre Ward said, which alludes to my second point. Andre Ward said, if you want legitimacy, which is what you really, really, really are pursuing. You are pursuing legitimacy and credibility from other boxers in the community. Past and present. You need to fight me if you want that. You want legitimacy? Fight me. I ain't going to chase you. But if you want the legitimacy that you are pursuing in the boxing community, I, I, I'll entertain the conversation. If Andre Ward is injured enough where he had to retire, where within the last seven years, he didn't call out those fighters that I just mentioned, that's around his weight class that performed and competes at a high level, then he should keep that same energy, stay injured, and don't try to call out or entertain a conversation for Jake to fight Jake Paul. Because here's the thing, whether Andre Ward agree with me, whether Tim Bradley agree with me, whether any professional boxer past or present agree with me we all can agree on the same level that Jake Paul has established legitimacy by the boxing community Woo! this is why I said that Andre Ward's statement is conflicting to me because in one breath Andre Ward is saying, I'm an old man, I'm 40 years old, I'm retired, I haven't competed within seven years. I'm not chasing after Jake Paul or no other fighter. I'm not calling people out. All that sounds good. 
But if Jake Paul didn't have legitimacy in the boxing community, Andre Ward wouldn't even entertain the conversation. Because, hey, Andre Ward just said, and you heard him, his words, not mine. I calculate the decisions that I make. I sit back and think before I make decisions. I don't act off of emotion. So just the mere fact that that is the caliber of person that he is. And then he comes out and say he'll entertain the conversation. Let's me know that he put some thought into it. But Andre Ward wouldn't have put any thought on entertaining the conversation to fight Jake Paul if Jake Paul had no legitimacy. So if he felt that Jake Paul has legitimacy, then Jake Paul don't need to fight Andre Ward to get something that he already has. And I wish you asked me, how does Jake Paul have legitimacy in the boxing community? Because Andre Ward's saying if he really want the legitimacy, that he'll basically get the legitimacy from the boxing community if he fights him. Well, if he didn't have legitimacy, once again, Andre Ward wouldn't entertain the conversation or no other fighter like Mike Tyson. You see where I'm going with this? So now ask me. Ask me right now in the comments section. Ask me why. Ask me why. When you see me live, when I go live, because you know I'm going live, come in the chat and ask me why. I say, Jake Paul already has legitimacy in the boxing community. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now. Jake Paul already has legitimacy in the boxing community because just in one event alone, he has surpassed the boxers who are making criticisms and critiques and even challenges to him. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Now, he's been progressing, not just his development through his skill sets, but also his popularity in the sport of boxing and having his own promotion company. I'm not even just talking about just that. Let's just take one event with his name attached to it. How about this last one? Where it's been reported that 60 million homes, 60 million viewers, 60 million Homes was touched and tapped in to Netflix when Jake Paul fought Mike Tyson. And some reports even claim that there was a $17 million gross receipt for the live gate. And of course, it was nearly, if not, sold out. At the AT&T Stadium, one of the most prestigious and largest stadiums in NFL, there in Arlington, Texas, where I used to live a few minutes down the street. Anyway, y'all see where I'm getting at with this? Jake Paul has legit legitimacy in the boxing community just based off of those numbers that I just mentioned alone from the people that attended the actual event at AT&T Stadium for the millions of people that tuned in to Netflix for that one event for the live gate receipts ticket sales not including the revenue that his promotion company's YouTube channel generated from the viewership of all of the behind the scenes footage that they posted and published. Come on now. Casual boxing fans tuned in. And guess what else happened? 
that established legitimacy in the boxing community for Jake Paul. Women's boxing. Woo! See, I didn't even bring that point up in the last video about this. But women's boxing had a lot of eyes on it. Casual boxing fans were able to watch a close competitive fight between two legitimate champions. Champions competing at a high level. Women's boxing. Come on now. Had more eyes on women's boxing in the history of the sport. Thank you, Jake Paul. Thank you, Mike Tyson. Thank you, Serrano and Taylor. Thank you, Mario Barrios, Shushu, all the other fighters. Thank y'all. Thank you, Netflix. And thank you, boxing. And this what it is all about. So come on, Andre. And I got a lot of love and respect for Dre. Andre Ward. I followed his career for a long time when he was with Goose and Tudor Promotions. God rest the soul of Dan Goosen. I've been... Look, look, check this out. Give you some history on Andre Ward. Don't forget, for real, for real, when I say for real, for real, I mean for real, for real, in real life, the first fighter that was exposed to working with Victor Conti after Victor Conti came home from prison was Andre Ward. Let's do the math, y'all. Some of y'all are, 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 are not aware of that. And most of you may be. Yeah. Do y'all research. I've been following Ward since then. Matter of fact, before that, when the, I'm going to take y'all back, the Super Six tournament on Showtime. Y'all remember that tournament? The Super Six? With him, Carl Frotch, Mikkel Kessler. Y'all remember that? I'm going way back. I've been following Andre Ward before the Super Six tournament. Because you know why? I remember that so much. Because there was two fighters I wanted to compete in the championship. And that was Andre Ward and uh, uh, Andre Durrell. The Battle of Andres. I'm going back a long time ago. But my point in saying all of that is, this ain't about whether I like him or don't. This is not about whether or not we share the same uh, spiritual faith as Christian men. This is not about none of that. We talking about boxing. So, no, I don't agree with Andre Ward that he says that in order for Jake Paul to gain legitimacy in the boxing community, he would have to fight Andre Ward. No, he don't. He already got legitimacy in the boxing community. That's why that, 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 that why Mike Tyson was in there with him. A living legend. That's why you, Andre Ward, entertaining the conversation. Huh? Let's talk about it. You know what? I'm doing way too much talking. 